Yeah, so welcome everybody. Um, this is a very um, interesting topic that we're covering today on the Just Transition Greens um, monthly monthly talk. Um, so today we're joined by um, Dr. Jane O'Hara from Divest Ireland um, and Sinead Whelan from Extinction Rebellion. Um, so Jane is a, a key leader in setting up Divest Ireland, which is a grassroots One Future group um, campaigning on fossil fuel divestment in Ireland. Um, and Sinead is a, um, a leading X, XR activist who was part of a group of women who recently carried out um, a pretty amazing action at JP Morgan in, in Dublin. Um, so um, I think we, what we can do is we can start with um, Jane to say a few introductory words. Um, if you want to um, take it away there, Jane. Yeah, thanks, um, <clears throat> thanks Elaine. And, um... Yeah, I haven't timed this exactly, everybody, so uh, hopefully I won't go on too long, but um, yeah, I'll uh, introduce the, the campaign and, and say a little bit about what we're doing and, and why we're doing it. So um, yeah, as Elaine said, I'm Jane. I'm one of the people who set up the Divest Ireland campaign. So it's really great to be here to talk to this group about divestment um, and to also share the platform with Extinction Rebellion um, is great because I think they're doing some brilliant work. We would really hope to work more with them uh, in future on some of our shared aims, which I think overall are to defund the fossil fuel industry and make it a lot less profitable and uh, to decrease that social license to support the fossil fuel industry as well. So um, Divest Ireland, the campaign is very recent. Um, it's moved pretty quickly. It arose from a conversation last November that I ended up having with Shane, who's here and also working on the campaign. Um, and then in late January, I believe, we got Elaine on board, who's chairing the meeting, and uh, Quiva as well, and we have a few other people, but mainly just the four of us have been doing most of the work. Um, we'd really like to get more people involved just on that. Um, to strengthen our numbers so if anyone here is interested in joining us or or finding out more after you hear what i'm i'm talking about you'd be very welcome and i'll let you know towards the end how you can get in contact with us so i'm going to talk a bit about the campaign why we set it up um what we have been doing and what we plan to do in the future uh, i'm not going to share slides so it will just be me me talking for the next few minutes um, so most of you have probably heard of divestment, um, I'll just speak about it in relation to fossil fuels in this um, meeting. So what is it basically and how does it relate to the climate emergency? So divestment is the opposite of investment really. So um, our money, if it's located or housed in bank accounts or financial investments, is typically being used to fund existing and new fossil fuel exploration projects globally. So divesting from fossil fuels means moving that money away from organizations that um, are exploiting the Earth's natural resources, so the fossil derived resources, so mainly oil, gas and coal. Um, a statistic from Project Drawdown, which is a useful Climate resource says that burning of fossil fuels contributes to 62% of the global warming caused by greenhouse gases that are released into the atmosphere. So it's a pretty huge percentage. So it really makes sense that defunding the fossil fuel industry has to be a major part of addressing the climate crisis. And it really has to happen now. We don't have a lot of time to wait. And, you know, us as regular people, we're up against some of the biggest, wealthiest companies um, in the world run by the most powerful people in the world. Um, so there, there are various sizes of divestment movements around the world. Um, I would say it's fairly small in Ireland compared to other places, like it's bigger in the US and the UK. There's been a lot of activism in the last few years um, both in both of those countries. Um, so, and, and that's really, a, a lot of it is based around just ordinary people like ourselves telling banks that they want to divest their, um, their funds and to demand change in this area. Uh, just on a, a point, you know, does, does divestment actually work um, as an idea? Like, is it successful? So 
there was a, an article in the Financial Times that came out this week. Um, you can look it up. I think it's um, open access. The title is Fossil Fuel Groups Are Hit Extra Hard by Divestment Pledges That Go Viral. So that was, um, and that's related to Ireland. So basically in, in 2018, there was news that a sovereign wealth fund in Ireland called the Ar Irish Strategic Investment Fund was divesting from fossil fuel companies after a vote in the Dáil. So they voted to divest a fund of 72 million euro. Um, and that was consist that was investing in 38 fossil fuel companies. So just that announcement, that pledge of divestment being made and being made public um, ended up having a huge impact on the market value of those companies. And it, it actually wiped $14 billion off the share price of those companies. Um, they were some of the largest US oil and gas companies. So they lost 3.1% of their total value. Now they probably regained their value again through new investment, but it just really shows, I think, um, that not just divesting, but even pledge to divest actually ha can have a huge impact. Um, and I think John has just shared the article there. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, and for example, I mean, in the UK, there's five of the main banks. Again, a report came out today saying that the five main banks, including ones like Barclays, um, they provided $5.7 billion to the world's biggest expanders of oil, gas and coal just in 2022 alone. Um, it is a little bit harder to find the, uh, the stats for Irish financial institutions, by the way, if anybody, um, we have some stats coming from the central bank, but I think it's a bit, it's a bit harder um, to get the, the actual numbers of what's invested in fossil fuels here. So finding the information can be a bit of a challenge in the first place. But I think that in other countries, awareness is really growing of how the banks of financial institutions are uh, using our money to fund the climate disaster. And awareness really is the first step to taking action. Um, and in Ireland, I would say we're probably still lacking a bit in awareness. We haven't done any major surveys or anything yet, but we um, just in talking to people about this, it just seems there isn't a great awareness. I didn't have a great awareness myself about it before, before I started this campaign. So it's something that we really want to work on with the campaign. Um, yeah, so what are we doing in Divest Ireland? So I've mentioned the Ireland, uh, the Irish Strategic Investment Fund. Um, that was divested, which was a good first step. Um, public sector um, pensions here. So we're going to be focusing on pensions. The public sector pensions in Ireland, at least since 2013, are in the single payer system, um, meaning that the people paying into pensions now, uh, that money is going to people who are retiring now. Um, and that's sort of a cyclical um, system, if, if you know what I mean. So that's not actually investing in the stock market at all. So we decided to focus our campaign on the on private pensions. So particularly company pension schemes where workers get pension contributions from their employers. So that's a huge section of, of the pensions market. We do know that about $60 trillion is invested in pensions globally. Like it's just a, such a massive number, it's hard to even imagine. And then in Ireland, that's about 117 billion euro. So that's the total pension amount. We don't know exactly how much this, of this is invested in fossil fuels. Um, we, we would like to, to get that information, but we can assume it's a significant amount. So divesting would re remove a lot of that source of funding for fossil fuels and actually signal, importantly as well, that investment in these companies is becoming more risky and that investors would risk actually having stranded assets if they continue to invest in, in the companies. Um, another step then would be to divert some of those inv investments to more sustainable companies. Um, there's something called ESG, environmental, social, and governance. So there are certain funds that are set up to be um, deliberately ethical and, and impactful and sustainable. Um, again, we don't think there's a lot of awareness on this issue. Um, I, I sort of got interested in this. There's, there's a group called Make My Money Matter in the UK. So they have done some studies um, showing that divesting, I think an average sized workers pension from fossil fuels would save 21 times more carbon than a combined action of adopting a vegetarian diet, giving up flying and switching to a renewable energy provider. So it's, it's pretty, 
if those numbers are actually correct, you know, it is, it is a significant amount of savings that each of us can make. So, you know, in starting this campaign, we thought having that conversation with the pension provider, your employer could be, a, it's a no brainer in terms of making big carbon savings. So, yeah, in, in our activities, we've kind of got two strategies, um, two kind of target groups. And one is just ordinary people who are pension holders. And the other is politicians. So just to talk about the, the pension holders first. So as I said, we're mainly focusing on um, employer linked pension funds. So, you know, people who have their own private pension can also take action. They can go and talk to their pension provider. It's a bit easier for them. Uh, so if you're in a company and you're, you probably, you might not get an option as to what pension fund you're, you're paying into. It might be decided for you, especially in a big company. Everyone probably has to pay into the same, the same fund. It's just easier for the company and somebody like a financial head might make that decision. Um, so our campaign so far has been asking people to pledge to speak to their employers about offering pension options that are divested from fossil fuels, even just offering an option that they can take, we think would give more awareness and make people look into that a bit more and, and take a bit more responsibility, a bit more ownership. And then if they were to talk to colleagues as well about this, they could form groups where they could ask, you know, more people asking is always more powerful than just those isolated individuals. And then also trying to get people to talk to their pension providers about expanding the options available. Um, I won't get into it too much. But there, there wouldn't be as many green options in Ireland as we would like to have yet. Um, so we set up a pledge. Um, we, we based it around the 24th of March because in the UK, uh, a group called UK Divest have been doing a huge amount of work um, and they set up the 24th of, of March. They set it as a divestment day. So we thought we'd link in with that. We're really lucky to have support from Friends of the Earth in this, by the way. So Rosie Leonard in particular has been really good at, you know, she hosted the pledge for us on the Friends of the Earth website and she's given us really good campaign advice and a couple of the other people there have as well. So um, that experience has been really invaluable. We got about 50 people signing our pledge and we will be following up with them to see you know, if they took action and how we can help them more and how we can get them more involved, because they obviously have some interest in the topic, but it's not a huge amount of people yet, but it is a start. Um, so, but to really achieve change, as I'm sure you all know, we, we need political awareness and we need political action. Um, that's how we're really going to change things. So on that, we have been engaging with politicians, um, including especially one Green Party TD, Mark O'Cohesey. So he's interested in this, and that's because of something called the Auto Enrollment Pension Scheme. So I don't know if too many of you will be aware of this. I'm just going to speak about it for a couple of minutes before I finish. Um, so this is a is a pension scheme, uh, as the name suggests. It's going to be later introduced later in 2023. We we think. Um, so as the name suggests, it will mean that everyone is going to be automatically enrolled in pension scheme. That's not the case at the moment. You have to opt in, but it will be more of an opt out rather than an opt in. At the moment, we think about a third of workers don't have a pension. Um, and I, earlier I mentioned the figure of 117 billion euro in pensions in Ireland. So that figure is going to increase a lot when that other one third of workers are, are enrolled in pensions. So it's a huge amount of money. Um, and there's no current requirement for any pension holders to be offered a divested or green or sustainable option. So it's a really missed opportunity for that large scale removal of funds um, from those polluting companies and also to get, get more cleaner investment in renewable energy and other ethical products that we know are part of the solution. So Mark O'Connessy has actually been working on a report um, with the Oireachtas Committee um, on social protection and he's been he's been telling us about that so this is a pre-legislative legislative scrutiny report so no legislation has been brought in yet but that is the plan the report is due to be released in early may um, and we would really hope that it makes strong recommendations on this topic and that it will recommend that um workers be given an option at least to, to divest from from fossil fuels we don't know what it's going to contain yet so we have to wait till may but we're really hoping that um, we we want to co coincide that with ramping up our campaign. Um, you know, the timing is, is really important. 
so because there's a huge point like the government is going to choose which funds are um are options for people to opt into uh, or to be enrolled in automatically actually um we don't know if any of those are going to be fossil free if any we really think that they should they should be all of them you know the Ireland Strategic Investment Fund was, was a really good example, a really good step towards divestment, and it would be a huge step back if um, private pensions weren't also given the same option. Um, we think the default fund, you know, because most people don't know that much about pensions, you know, it is, it is a tricky topic to get into. It's not particularly interesting, maybe, unless you're in finance, um, which, which I'm not, by the way. But... You know, so a lot of people are just going to go for whatever the default option is because it's the easiest. And we just think that should be fossil free just at a minimum. It's a massive amount of money. It's going to be billions of euro. Um, and once the legislation is passed, it's going to be much harder then to actually change it. So this is a really crucial key time to be engaging with um, politicians and really telling them that we need this to be to be done. Um, yeah, so. I think that's that's really most of what I wanted to say. And just a, a final point that, um, that there was something actually in the Climate Action Plan in 2019 about this. So it was proposed then that there be requirements for options to be given on divestment um, of pensions. But they, the Department of Social Protection made a complete U-turn on this and they decided not to go with that. And it was sort of hidden, you know, so Noteworthy, which are part of the journal.ie, did an investigation on this recently. Um, I was interviewed by them about this. And what they found out was that um, this U-turn was made and that that recommendation was completely removed from future climate action plans. So we want to make it a political issue again. Now is the time because of this pre-legislative scrutiny report. Um, and we're, we're really glad that Mark is engaging with us on this um, as a TD. And we just need more people to, to be aware of it and to try and push for change. Um, so that's, that's really all I wanted to say just to, to begin. And um, thank you. Thanks a million, um, Jane. That was really informative and um, fitting so, so much um, um, information and updates on, on where we are with divestment in, in, in a short space of time. So thank, thank you very much for that. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm now going to show um, a, a video that makes, that just invigorates me every time I watch it. Um, so I hope it will have the, the same effect on 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 you um on you all um so this should work um can you all see the video there um yeah i think so I can see it. great um so um this and this video is by way of introduction of our second speaker tonight Sinead Whelan who um, put together, um, or, you know, played a key role in putting together this um, amazing action at JP, JP Morgan Bank um, on, on the 23rd of, of March. So it sort of speaks for itself. So I'll just press play. JP Morgan is the world's largest banking investor in fossil fuels, and that's despite the UN having told us this month that that is a future incompatible with human survival. There's nothing feminist about destroying the planet. There's no human intent on a dead planet. Climate change amplifies gender inequality. Women already bear the greater burden from rising climate, from heat waves, drought, famine, sea level rise, and irreversible change. Solutions that are possible now will not be possible in the future. We have a rapidly closing window of opportunity and JP Morgan is closing that window. JP Morgan is saying that they're increasing their sustainability, that they're decreasing their reliance on fossil fuels, but it's not true. Last year you had massively increased fossil fuel investment. Don't listen to their greenwashing everyone. Let's all work together on this. Climate justice is women's justice. JP Morgan, how can you say you care about women or equality when you are driving a climate crisis? Women are 14 times more likely to die in natural disasters than men. 80% of people who are displaced by climate change are women. That leads to violence, 
sexual violence and human trafficking. If you really cared about women's rights, you would divest from fossil fuels now. If you're considering coming to work for JP Morgan, please reconsider. Don't become part of the machinery that is funding climate chaos and driving the destruction of our planet. And for those of you working for JP Morgan, we urge you to please demand that JP Morgan divest from all fossil fuels. Let's join together and stand up as women who demand what is right and what is just for our world. Please. JP Morgan, pick a side, divest now or eco side. JP Morgan, pick a side, divest now or eco side. JP Morgan, pick a side, divest now or eco side. Climate justice, women's rights, same struggle, same fight. Climate justice, women's rights, same struggle, same fight. Climate justice, women's rights, same struggle, same fight. So I'm just going to clap, <laughs> uh, clap with that. I know probably most of you have your audio off, but um, um, yeah, just to just to um, express like ex appreciation for that um, very amazing action um, that um, Sinead and and um, and her group, um, uh, Angela and others um, uh, did did that day. So um, yeah, so without. Um, further ado, um, I'd like to pass the floor to um, Sinead, um, who has some slides um, um, from Extinction Rebellion. Hi. Hi. Thanks so much, Elaine. Um, yeah, so that was me in the beginning of the video. So it was, kind of makes me cringe watching the video, but it was <laughs> it was good. Um, yeah. Um, thanks so much, uh, Jane, as well. It was a really interesting talk. Um, thank you. Um, so yeah, I'm not really like an expert by divestment at all, but um, I was just asked to talk and I was um, really appreciated. So I'm just gonna talk a little bit about like, um, oh, just a quick overview of like what we have, like why we are focusing on divestment right now and like what our approach to it is. And then a little bit about the just transition. Um, but yeah, as I say, I'm not an expert. So Jane would probably definitely know more about that, but. Um, I'll just start to share now. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, is that working? Yep. Perfect, thank you. Um, so yeah, um, basically this is just the, a little graph showing the trajectory of uh, global fossil fuel financing. So this is for the 60 uh, largest banks in the world uh, of which JP Morgan is in. Um, and as you can see, so, I mean, it's kind of, it's gone up and then it went down, but it's still overall on an upward trend since the Paris Agreement. Um, so it's about 4.6 trillion overall since then um and it's um uh this i got this source from banking on climate chaos uh the 22 2022 report but um the today actually the 2023 report came out so this is already out of date but <laughs> i made the slides before i knew that but i think now it's five and a half trillion uh since the paris agreement um and it's yeah it's not showing any sign really of slowing down overall there is still um it's still more than it was the year after they signed the paris agreement um so um and then this is just a little uh graph of uh the major banks um who are financing it and jp morgan is the largest by far by a third um it's been the largest every year since paris agreement and it is um, the biggest investor in um, uh, in all the fossil fuel companies that are expanding. And um, I won't like go into all the metrics, but like they're the worst on pretty much every everyone, like fracked or fracked gas, Arctic gas, Amazon oil, um, sand uh, tar sand oil, and also. Um, they're also um, involved in a couple of projects which are violating indigenous rights, such as um, a fossil fuel project in Australia. 
so yeah pretty much a, a terrible um company one of the worst ones uh the, the worst run for fossil fuel financing the worst bank and um uh they they um uh last year um was kind of the year of uh greenwashing for banks when they um no it's 21 21 sorry is when they all um it was led by the UN, they set up this thing called the uh, Net Zero Banking Alliance, which was um, 44 out of these uh, 60 banks, the biggest in the world, joined it. And it was about reaching net zero um, by 2050. Um, but of course, um, I mean, net zero doesn't mean an overall reduction in emissions, first of all. And um, also, I mean, the, the, the many of the metrics don't include the actual burning of the fossil fuels um, in there, like the banks don't include that in their metrics. But um, yeah, overall, anyway, the JP Morgan has increased by 10 billion from 2020 to 2021. So they're still increasing it, despite having um, a lot on their website all about uh, the sustainability. And they do have a target of, um, what is it, reducing 15% by 2030. They missed that target already by increasing by 10 billion, uh, but even reducing 15% by 2030, like the International Energy Agency told us, it has to be no new oil or gas now in a, for any hope to reach 1.5 degrees. And obviously that um, these targets are not good enough. And even then they are missing these targets. So overall, um the net zero goals are just really a way to keep expanding now while in the short short term to yeah just to greenwash um so that's why we are that's why we were focused on this as a problem um so then i'm just going to quickly talk about um why we why we did what we did in JP Morgan. Um, so basically, um, Extinction Rebellion is um, we use direct action as our tactic, as our approach to things. And there's kind of two sides to that. So one is being disruptive. So like whatever you're doing, I mean, it can be occupying somewhere. It could be like tying yourself to a tree, or it can be going to a, a meeting and standing up and saying something. It's just basically to agitate um, and to just uh, be like disobedient, to break the rules. The rules don't have to be the law. It, they can be like social rules as well. Like things we did there weren't illegal, but they were, um, they were breaking like social norms and rules in that way. Um, so the being disruptive is important because it stops the thing, obviously, which you're protesting against, um, which is good. Um, and it most of the time, it will most likely just delay it. It won't stop it fully. But also um, what you're doing is kind of like, I think there's a lot of symbolic value in being in breaking the rules in, uh, in that sense, because you're kind of uh, retracting your consent for the way that these rules are working um, in this, in the case where you think that it's um, morally like objectable. Object yeah, so um, that's, and also it's really empowering to just, um, to just stand up and say that like, no, I don't stand for this. And then the other side, which kind of leads on from that is about theatrical or outreach. So like, Theatric, uh, not in a pejorative sense, just like um, has to be attention grabbing um, and has to deliver the message that you want to give. So, um, for like in all thing, like a protest, like you're like having signs, chanting, that's all about being theatrical. And um, for JP Morgan, it was, uh, it was, it had to be dramatic and it had to be um yeah like kind of like something that would catch people's attention and um especially with social media like if we just went there and we disrupted the meeting and we didn't film it 
it wouldn't have had half the embarrassing effect that it did on the company because um like the video has been viewed like last time i checked like 130,000 times which is i didn't expect that at all but um it's quite good so yeah it's important to um have that sort of element as well and also like outreach to um call people to join you and involve people not necessarily about making people like you i mean because <laughs> they're not always going to like you or agree with what you're doing but um just to i mean all it's always about raising awareness in the public consciousness about the issue and also um about the climate crisis as a whole um uh one of the principles so xor has three main principles the first one is um um act now second one is tell the truth and then the third one is beyond politics so participatory democracy but um telling the truth is really important and um often like the best way to do that is to be to appeal to people's emotions really because people know the facts at this stage it's more about um the emotions and um yeah so that's why often it has to be actions have to be dramatic but um the ideal thing is when and most actions are that is when they are both disruptive and they are theatrical and they reach out to people and they attract attention while also just making a nuisance of yourself to the people that you are trying to who you are against really um yeah so i mean the irish context is really important if we think about it as like direct action as a whole i mean um so we if we're trying to be disruptive there aren't there isn't much um though this could change in the future there isn't much fossil fuel infrastructure um in the country at the moment um but luckily there is a 12.5 percent corporate tax rate so we have a lot of headquarters for companies banks like um all of these banks have their European or big offices in Dublin with many employees and um it's a oops sorry um it's just um that's why we've been focusing on that because um it's for the divestment it's very important to just highlight that um these companies are right like in in Dublin um at home um and yeah we've also been trying to keep the public on our side by using direct action on um the people who are the um on the like the institutions who are the ones who are causing the problems and not um i mean a lot of direct action in the uk at the moment is like and also throughout europe is um it's it's stuff that targets the public and we are trying to not do that and focus on the um the polluters um we're targeting the actual problem and yeah um just very quickly um this is just my opinion or if, i mean if you just transition greens um to yeah i think urgent action and we would be for the direct action um so at every possible opportunity and um also calling out the hip hypocrisy like First of all, the, I mean, that event was about, it was about having women in tech. It was basically a recruitment thing so that JP Morgan could have, I don't know, um, well, more employees and more diverse, just um, gender quota, I guess. But um, the hypocrisy of them, like um, they are talking about how right on they are, how woke they are with all their women on the board of directors when they are fueling a climate crisis, like, just have to take every chance to call, call out that kind of um narrative and also like um the greenwashing which is so obvious and frustrating and then also intersectionality which is what um we try to do try to highlight with that is um just um how the what it's 
doing is just affecting like in that action we highlighted um how it affects women um but obviously um just considering how all the different um vulnerable people in society are going to be the ones that suffer most so that's that we have to keep focusing on that and to do that i think pressure on the government is kind of key because um these companies um like at the end of the day they're they're for profit they don't care about people so um i think that while we while we target these companies we also have to make sure that we are simultaneously asking the government to do their part to ensure that they just can't um that we first of all don't let them yeah um exp uh, externalize all the misery that they are causing and also um keep all the profits at least so um that's basically what i have to say um thanks and yeah if you want to ask questions they may not know the answer but keep um if you want to ask hard ones please do Thank you. Thanks a million, Sinead. That was that was really insightful. Um, and yeah, it was really great to hear about um or to see the action itself and also hear about yeah, how how this how these techniques um can work to raise the profile of, of these very important issues. Um, um I th I'm I'm going to use use my privilege as chair to ask. Um, one or two questions myself and then hand it over to um, to the floor as well. If people also want to type um, questions into the chat, um, you're welcome to do that um, and hopefully we'll, we'll get to them. Um, I just wanted to ask a little bit more about um, greenwashing. I mean, you both you both mentioned about greenwashing. Um, um, like, I, I know there's been a lot of, at EU level, there's been this whole thing about the taxonomy and um, the taxonomy of investment where how you're able to classify um, investments as you know light green and dark green and all of this um depending on how how depending on how how green it is and um, but you know the controversy that's gone into that where um fossil gas has been allowed to qualify as a green investment and many of the um investment funds that um that are being classified as green, including being classified by the EU uh, as officially green. So they're not just calling themselves green, but they're actually being classified offic in official um, documents, government documents as green, are actually invested in fossil fuels. Um, and, you know, as an individual pension um, holder, you know, you might think, oh, let me make a responsible choice here and try and put my pension in a, in a green investment fund. But then that may well be a sort of a greenwashed investment fund. Um, and then I suppose Sinead um, also mentioned about the greenwashing where they don't count the, um, so JP Morgan maybe counts as its emissions, it's like the, the emissions of the buildings that it has its offices in, rather than the emissions of all of the oil and gas that it's extracted out of, out of the ground um, and it's sent around the world. And then um, its emissions, the emissions of when those, are actually burnt or is not actually counted oh that's not jp morgan's emissions that's somebody else's emissions you know like so the the greenwashing that goes on and you know the sort of the the hyperbole i suppose um and greenwashing that's on um, many of the websites um and also the history of of the companies um you know lying to us um over the decades um lying to us and trying to um lie about climate science and cover it up um so yeah, I was just I just wanted to maybe ask maybe both both of you Jane and Sinead, you know a bit a bit more about like how you see greenwashing. How can we make sure that we don't fall for the greenwashing? I suppose um, is 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 the question. And how yeah, that's the question. Um, I I could maybe just start by saying um. Yeah, I, th I think we're just in this interesting place now where everyone's becoming aware of the sustainability issue and companies are becoming aware that they need to be seen to be doing something about it, but we're maybe not just yet at the point where they're having to prove exactly what they're doing. Um, I'm actually doing a course in um, business sustainability and 
last night just one of the lecturers was mentioning Goldman Sachs I think as an example of um extreme greenwashing you know they're a massive institution with lots of money and they um were saying that they were investing in a certain fund that was green and they had just relabeled um a fund that was investing in fossil fuels and, and other non-green um products as green so it was as simple as that it was very basic sort of if anybody looked they were going to find out but they obviously thought they could get away with it um i think as well just in europe there is more legislation coming in but we're just in this sort of gray area i think at the moment where where there is going to be a lot of greenwashing because companies are saying well we want to look good but we're not necessarily putting in the work yet until we're made to do it but i do think that um stick as opposed to the carrot is coming down the road um i just know that it's very complicated and nobody's really been compelled yet to use a kind of standardized system for reporting but there's this um scope three emissions it's called so that means um not just having to prove that what you're doing is um sustainable as a business but also what your suppliers and your supply chain and your value chain are doing and so on so that would seem to cover things like where you're getting certain products from transporting of goods and so on so it's it's a huge task and it just seems very complicated but i i hope that just the more awareness that um the customers of, of businesses have will, will really put pressure on the companies to actually do things properly and that we'll get employees in there who care more because i was really struck by what Sinead said about um you know just the companies like jp morgan not caring but you know i think it was maybe angela in the video who said to people if you're working for jp morgan or you're thinking about coming to work for jp morgan you know please don't do that or if you're working here you know try and get them to change and i think you know companies are made up of people um so it's really it's really important to to try and get some of those people to think differently and i do think actions like um the jp morgan action that Sinead and the others took hopefully just made some of those people even in the room think twice about what they're doing and um, so they're just some of my thoughts on greenwashing yes yeah, it's, it's a, it's a big problem thanks jane um any thoughts on greenwashing um Sinead and how we can not fall for it um yeah i mean um <laughs> i guess yeah um i that's all you very true and hopefully more legislative stuff comes in soon um honestly I'm just of a cynical view like just don't trust anything that you hear to be honest unless you put in like a lot of research um there is good resources out there um um the blanking banking on climate chaos being one of them um, to find out it shouldn't be this much onus on the individual to find out where they are investing and it's incredibly difficult sometimes to it, it shouldn't be this difficult and it shouldn't be um, people's responsibility to find out whether they they're um, are investing unknowingly in fossil fuels um, so I would just um, yeah I would hopefully um, just if we put enough pressure on the government and um, also at international level hopefully that um, they can put in appropriate guidelines in place and restrictions on what they can say and what they can't say. Thanks, Sinead. Um, yeah, if does anybody on the floor want to raise a question? No. I can see. I can see um, um, Honore, um, if you, if you want to just unmute yourself and um, and uh, and and say your question um, verbally that you've typed in. Um, maybe you can't, or can you hear us? Or we can we can come back. You're on mute, I think. Yep. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. All right. Um, sorry, sorry there. Um, 
my apologies. Um, thanks for all the intervention and this, um, um, discussion going going or going on the things the the start of this meeting. Thank you. I have uh, I have my question for for Jane and for 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 Sinead. So um, you are doing a fabulous job. I might I might I might compliment that for to you this this evening. You are doing a a, a great job with the and uh, <clears throat> I not um I note that uh, I note from the from the chat from the chat. I think uh, um Shina was doing the presentation a while ago, and I note from the chat that the, the fourth biggest spending in fossil fuel burning are American banks, uh, uh, going past for uh, JP Morgan and three others. I think City City Bank and two other banks are. They are all the fourth the four first big spenders are American banks, and. Um, and um just a second. so and you know, my understanding is that by spending all this money they mean they mean business they mean business so uh how far do you think you can go you can go via process if your awareness campaign doesn't go through. Thanks, Honoris. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I suppose about, about the effectiveness of, you know, are we going to change the mm. minds of people in, okay. in these in, in these banks? Um yeah. I guess is the is 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 the issue and um which actually also Honori links with another question that um, Ben um, Ben Freeman asked in advance of the um, which is which is also about the workers um, the, the workers of of these banks which I suppose could be workers at at every level from the CEO to sort of professionals to um, to um, people who you know who 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 do maybe quite poorly paid jobs in in these mm -hmm. in these organizations um like what's what's our what's our message to people who 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 work there and and i suppose if, if it was angela raised it very well in the in the video um um but can can we really can we really change them or you know should we just should they just be like abolished and start again um is there any scope for 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 these types of banks to actually change um, or should we give up on them and um, they should be basically abolished and new new institutions established? It's, it's a controversial question maybe. Um, so I hope I'm, I'm sort of paraphrasing that okay um, Honore but I suppose it's about yeah they're they're big businesses they they want to do business so how can we will they change actually? Um. Yeah, um, I'll say, um, well, first of all, on the employees, um, yeah, I think it's a, um, of course, employees are really valuable in getting people to, uh, getting change, um, and also um, talking to people who were, like, uh, when we were doing the thing at JP Morgan, um, we, um someone uh heard some of the people there talking and they were talking and like I didn't know that and you know I think that we did make them think twice about uh working there and I think that um we also like it's important to raise these things I don't think that the employees are bad people just because they work there um and they can be valuable in changing that um but um is are we going to be able to make them change like um I think <laughs> we kind of like it's a crunch time like there we have it's things are just um at a point now where either it has to change or it's just going to get drastically drastically worse so it may not change soon but um there is a role for them to play where they can make the world with all that money they could put it towards um investing in renewables and 
the right thing to do. I think that, I mean, I don't see that it's a campaign that we could give up on really because it's, it is life or death for a lot of people in the world. And um, yeah, um, it's not about, yeah, I think eventually either they, yeah, I mean, they're gonna have to divest. And I think um, hopefully, I mean, lots of movements have done things that seemed impossible and it's a great, we're coming up against a big force, but I think, you know, it can be done. Thanks, Janet. Um, Anthony, let's see your hand up there. Sorry, I was just trying to find the unmute. Um, yeah, just uh, well, first of all, I'd like to thank Jane and Janet. I thought that was excellent. Um, just coming back to that pension, you know, related to that auto enrollment, the potential of an auto enrollment pension in Ireland to mirror the UK, I think it's essential that we have that baseline of any pension funds that are subsidized by the state should be. Uh, divested as a baseline. The, the problem we're going to have is, well, how do we measure that? What's the legislative basis of a divested fund? You know, that that's the key thing. And, and even more broadly, beyond auto enrollment, the fact that we subsidize all pension funds by the virtue of, you know, the, the tax benefit of all pensions. If we're serious about this, we would have some sort of a timeline for, you know, for, for reducing that tax benefit for all pensions unless divested. But it comes back to that central point of how do we measure a divested fund? That's what we need to tackle. Thanks for, for that, um, that comment, Anthony. That's that's um, that's very useful. That like, yeah, you know, I suppose as a, as a very basic thing, um, we should have the option to take um, taking pensions out of out of um, fossil fuels. But really, they should, yeah, there should the option there should be no public money going into um, funds that are invested in fossil fuels, whether that's via tax breaks um, to private pension um, schemes or um, via the auto enrollment scheme. You know, there really should be no public money going into any fund that's invested in, in fossil fuels. Um, so that's sort of really the, um, the goal. Um, and then sort of, but at least having the options there um, to divest um, your, your own individual um, fund is sort of like a little maybe first step in the right direction but it's really only a minor step in some ways um um R rory um you had your hand you have your hand up there yeah i just wanted to well thank you both for for very interesting um discussion and, and i mean look the the power of the fossil fuel industries is is immense and i think um look i i i've been promoting hbo fuel which is a hydrated um vegetable fuel oil and, uh, and and I'm trying to encourage people to to actively use that in their vehicles and I think by personally making changes ourselves we can reduce the you know the the use of fossil fuels in in, in industry and in in uh, and I'm seeing changes in that um in, in 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 my in my you know local oil companies and stuff being being readily you know keen to supply alternative options to customers for for their fuel um and seeking seeking the alternative so I I think there's a slowly you know revolving change um uh, on the ground for uh, you know people want to make a difference um and i think that's very encouraging from a green perspective um and certainly i you know um you know i'm i'm, I'm happily running a vehicle on hbo for the last six months and no no you know it's very happy on that so um, i'm encouraged you know i'm just saying that, you know the alternatives are there and 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 i think you know we if we as 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 uh, uh customers are dependent on, on fossil fuels can move away from it and that market opens up um and i you know so certainly industries i know of are running their vehicles on, on hydrogen and and, and and hbo fuels and i'm not just wondering what your thoughts are on that are you are you encouraging that development um i think you know i think it's a positive thing so um yeah that's it really yeah thanks rory um yeah certainly um the 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 alternatives are 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 important um but also sometimes um sometimes we can if we focus on on the alternatives um but not on removing the fossil fuels and then you can get a situation where the alternatives are growing but the fossil fuels are also growing 
Um, so how um, I suppose it's like, yes, we need alternatives, but we also need to um, get rid of the fossil fuels as well. Um, so that will be my view. We're, we're coming up on time now, so I, I want to wrap it up. There's been a few comments there, so I want to leave the last words to um, maybe to, to Jane and Sinead um, to sort of maybe just wrap up with just, just a few words with about, um, about what drives you, I suppose, um, what drives you, um, why, you know, your passion for, for this divestment movement um, and yeah, just to wrap up on that. Um, I don't know who, who wants to go first and second on, on that to wrap up. Sure, um, I can go first. Um, yeah, it's it's hard to say, like, as I said, before I started this, I wasn't particularly interested in finance or pensions or anything. It's not a very sexy kind of topic, you know? Um, but I, I think I just, I listened to a podcast about it and it just really put in perspective what a big amount of money this is and how each of us are just contributing to it by just doing our regular banking. We're not even really thinking about it day to day, banking, pensions, investments, and so on. It was just a bit of a light bulb moment for me. And I think it has been for other people that I've spoken to about it since then. Um, but, but, yeah, driving me on it, I suppose, it's just the real feeling that we have this moment now to, to take action. Um, it is going to be too late at some point. And I think that's maybe what some people haven't, haven't grasped yet. Um, but you, you sort of have to want to understand that. I, I do think still maybe a lot of people are, are keeping their head in the sand about it, maybe because of fear and they're not sure what they can do. But like any, you know, there've been a lot of campaigns in Ireland recently that have worked really well through the power of people, sort of the marriage referendum and uh, repeal the eighth was another one. And I think we, we need something similar for climate. Like it's a bit dispersed still. We have lots of different people doing different things. Um, I think we're getting there a little bit with getting all on the same page. And at least I'm noticing people are having a lot more conversations just socially about it as well now, which is great. But yeah, for, for I don't know. Um, I think I just once I once I started seeing it, I couldn't couldn't go back to not seeing it. And what drives me is just working with people like yourselves who are also just really passionate about about making change and just seeing that it can actually be done even if it is slow. Um, yeah, so that's that's really what I, what I think about that. Thanks, Jane. Um, Sinead, some final words from you on what, um, what drive? Uh, yeah, um, I guess um, just um, empathy, I guess, and just, yeah, uh, just the realisation, um, which is hard to do, um, that of how bad it is, um, unless I do something in the next few years. Um, that's probably it and um the wanting to feel like I have um a choice over my own future like if um if I don't like yeah just taking like back what's uh like what should be what should be entitled to which is um a livable future so yeah I just that's really it I feel like um I want to I have to act and I will regret it if I don't do it when I'm older. Um, um, so yeah, and I also just, the lots of, it's good to be surrounded by people who also, um, like yourselves, who also care about these type of things. So thank you so much. And um, yeah, um, if you want to get learn more about Extinction Rebellion, you can follow us online and come to an event and see what we're about and join us if you want <laughs> thanks so much um can i just say as well i i just was, i've seen the video before but I, I was great watching it again and i'm just yeah really inspired by what you guys did because i would feel i would feel it was it would, it would be hard to do something like that um i know how you'd sort of feel very uncomfortable and 
you know, you could see in the video, some people were just sort of looking at you with a weird look and you just feel sort of, you don't want to feel socially sort of outcast, but, you know, seeing you guys do that made me feel more like maybe I could do something like that as well. And I'm sure it did for other people in the room and other people who saw the video, like thousands and thousands of people. So it's just so good. And as you said, you didn't do anything particularly you didn't do anything harmful you just spoke the truth um so just really really well done thank you yeah i mean it's like that would it was extremely scary i was very i was scared um but yeah it was really um empowering to do so i i it makes yeah makes makes you feel good and um i would i would recommend it's very easy to do <laughs> Great. Yep. Yeah, maybe I will. <laughs> you, you could hear the 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 sort of nervousness in in some of the voices, um, sort of nervousness, but um, a need to tell the truth, um, um, despite despite it being difficult in in such a context to sell to to tell the truth in in a sort of a probably a hostile the sort of environment. Um, so amazing courage, um, and very inspiring. Um, so I'd I'd I really but we need to wrap wrap it up there. So I'd really like to thank um, Sinead and Jane for such insightful um, um, talk today. Um, it's been really inspiring, and I hope everybody can um, follow up and um, please follow Divest Ireland. Um, um, look 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 up Divest Ireland and follow, and also look up Extinction Rebellion and follow and um, and see how you can how you can get involved. We all have a role. We don't know. You don't always know what your role is, um, but we all have a role in this um, um, somehow. So um, thanks very much, everybody, for joining and um, uh, hopefully see you at the next Just Transition Greens talk. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Thank thanks you. for sharing, Elaine. It was great. Thanks.